This is the 31st lecture in the FOA series of lectures on fiber optics. In this lecture, we're going to talk about wavelength division multiplexing, a technique used to share an optical fiber among many different signals all simultaneously. Wavelength division multiplexing uses the fact that light can be traveling down the fiber simultaneously from many different colors of light without mixing or interfering with each other. We've seen this all the time by light being dispersed by a prism where all the different colors of light are able to move through the air simultaneously until they reach the prism which separates them into their component colors. But we can do exactly the same thing in an optical fiber. So let's use a large core plastic fiber and some laser pointers to see exactly what's happening when wavelength division multiplexing is used. This is a large core plastic fiber and we'll use a red laser pointer and we'll modulate it to show how signals are typically modulated in the optical fiber. Now to our red laser pointer, let's add a green laser pointer. And as you can see, we can modulate the green light while the red light isn't bothered at all by the second light traveling in the fiber. If we had other colors of laser pointers, we could even add more colors. But this is a good example how two colors can be transmitted simultaneously down the fiber without interfering with each other. Just to show there's no preference for the colors, let's reverse it. We'll take the green light and send it down the center of the fiber, and then we'll start sending red light through separately. And as you can see, exactly the same thing happens. The green light is not bothered at all by the modulation of the red light in the same fiber. This technique was first used for wavelength division multiplexing in sending two signals over one fiber at the same time. You simply need two couplers to couple the light into and out of the fiber, two different sources, two different receivers, and optical filters. Those filters stop one color of light and let the other through. So the two branches of the color coupler on the receiver end can carry different signals to detectors simultaneously. Actually, the PON systems, passive optical networks for fiber to the home, work somewhat similar to this today, except they're sending fiber signals in opposite directions at different colors but the same technique applies. It's typical in long distance networks today to use wavelength division multiplexing on very long distance links. But here we use dense wavelength division multiplexing with more than 64 channels tightly spaced with fiber amplifiers for repeaters. We also can use coarse wavelength division multiplexing with fewer channels, wider spaced, but for those we need low water peak fiber, which allows us to use the entire spectrum of single mode fiber. In most systems today, it's preferred to add wavelengths instead of adding more fibers. And you can use it for bidirectional signals over a single fiber as is used in fiber to the home. system has its own wavelength range. DWDM used tightly spaced wavelengths in the range of roughly 1450 to 1650 nanometers. That's the range where fiber amplifiers can typically be used on long distance systems to amplify the signal for repeaters. Coarse wavelength division multiplexing uses broader spaced wavelengths over the full range of 1280 to 1650 nanometers, 
the full range of single mode fiber. But it needs low water peak fiber, so the high attenuation in the water peaks doesn't attenuate the signals for critical wavelengths. The wavelengths used in DWDM and CWDM are quite different because DWDM has so many different channels. The lasers are spaced at 0 0.8 nanometers, less than 1 nanometer. And the stability of these wavelengths requires using expensive DFB lasers. Coarse wavelength division multiplexing uses lasers at 20 nanometer spacing. So it's much less critical on the wavelength of all the different lasers. In long distance networks, fiber amplifiers are used to regenerate the signal. It's not a repeater, it's just an amplifier. It doesn't convert the signal to an electrical signal and then back to an optical signal. It actually works more like a fiber amplifier where the incoming signal goes into some erbium doped fiber pumped by a pump laser and we get stimulated emission along the fiber amplifier fiber itself. These erbium doped fiber amplifiers work in that 1450 to 1650 nanometer range that's used for dense wavelength division multiplexing. Look for another video soon on fiber amplifiers. When we're testing systems that use wavelength division multiplexing, it's not uncommon on longer lengths of fiber to test spectral attenuation because we need to ensure that over the entire band that we're doing our wavelength division multiplexing, that the fiber can transmit the signals with roughly equal attenuation. Systems tested this way are generally tested with broad wavelength sources to cover the entire wavelength range. We have another video on testing long distance networks that goes into more detail on testing. Testing the power in a DWDM system or CWDM system isn't all that difficult after the wavelengths have been demultiplexed into each individual wavelength channel, any standard power meter can measure the power. But the individual sources may be requiring testing for wavelength, as the wavelength is critical for making sure that the system operates properly. If the wavelength changes, the demultiplexing and multiplexing of the wavelength may not work properly. The FOA has many other videos, lectures on fiber optics and premises cabling, hints on fiber optics, and hands-on videos for both fiber and copper on our YouTube site. Please be sure to check those out and see which others you're interested in. We're the Fiber Optic Association, the International Professional Society of Fiber Optics, promoting fiber through education, certification, and testing. Find out more at our website, www.thefoa.org.